Animation. The 3DS animation system is superb. It echoes the animation system used by Unreal and Unity. In this video we're going to get this knight moving. The knight was prepared using the 3D content creation tool Blender and the great online resource Mixamo. The file knight.glb has four different animations and over the next few minutes I'll show you how to get the 3GS library to use them. Let's start with the template. Open app.js from the folder Start Lecture 10. Essentially this is the same as the previous video. We set up a scene, camera and renderer. Because we're loading a GLB file we change the default output encoding from linear to sRGB and we load an environment map. We'll be adding code in three places. One, in the onload callback for the GLB file. Two, adding some code to this setter function and finally adding some code to the render loop. First up the online callback. At the heart of the animation system is the animation mixer class. Updating this will cause any animations that have been added as actions to the mixer to move the desired part of a skin mesh or just move an object. The animation mixer class takes a single parameter, the root object, that any animations will be applied to. Here we set the night object, which is the GLTF scene. Eventually we want to be able to switch animations simply by using the setter function action. To allow for this we want to collect all the animations in the GLTF file and store them as name properties of an object. We create an object and the names array, then iterate over each animation in the GLTF property animations. The GLTF loader class parser creates an animations array as well as the scene property. We grab the name of each animation in this array and we use the name clip because the 3GS animation system thinks of these as instances of the animation clip class. To avoid issues over the case of the named string, we convert it to lower case, push it to the names array and store the clip as the name property in the animations object. Now we can access it using just the name. An alternative is to use the static method 3.animationClip find by name on the GLTF animations array, but I prefer the hashed object route. To launch the first animation we'll use the action setter we're yet to write. The animation we'll use first is look around. Finally in this function we'll set up a simple UI to allow us to switch animation. The GUI class lets us do this very easily. Just create an options object, it needs a single property name, create an instance of GUI and add a control. The add method has many alternatives and here we use three parameters, options, name and the names array. By using the names array, GUI will populate a drop down with each string from the names array as an option. We also add an onChange handler and this callback will get the name string selected from the drop down. All we need to do is set the action setter to this value and once we've added the code to the method it will blend the current animation to the newly selected one. Time to create the action code. In the code we're going to store the animation name that is currently playing as action name. The first thing we'll do is check if we are trying to set the action to the one currently playing. If we are then we return from the method without doing anything. Notice we consistently use the lowercase version of the name. Now we get the animation from the animations object we created earlier by using the name. If this animation clip exists then we convert this into an animation action using the animation mixer method clip action. An animation action uses the animation clip as its data but extends this to include time, the rate to play the animation clip and what to do about looping when the time property exceeds the duration of the clip. Using the mixer you can blend multiple animation actions and when doing this you can also use a weight property of an animation action 
to add emphasis to a clip. In this example we're only using a single action at a time. By default an animation action is set to loop indefinitely. One of the animation actions is die and this should not loop. We check for the name die and if we find this then we set clamp when finished to true and the loop property to loop once. This ensures that the night character stays on the floor when the die animation completes. Since we want to be able to start and restart our animations, we call the reset method. This method sets pause to false, enable to true, time to zero, and interrupts any schedule fading and warping. The 3GS animation system allows us to fade in, which we want to do as long as the current action is not die. If the night is laid flat on the ground, we want to simply switch to a new animation. We use the variable no fade to handle this. Having tested for the previous action, we can now store the new action name and set the action to play. If we have a current action and no fade is true, then the current action is disabled. If no fade is false, then we set current action to cross fade to the new action over half a second. And finally we store the new action as CUR action so we can set up disabling our crossfades later. If you run the app now, you'll be disappointed. No animation will show. We need to add a little code to the animation loop method, render. The clock instance allows us to get the time that's elapsed since we last called get delta. And we need to tell our animation mixer that it needs to move any animation actions on by this timed amount. Easily done, just call the update method passing the dt value. Now you can see the night animating and you can easily switch animations. But try commenting out the clamp when finish line to see its effect and the set loop line. The 3GS animation system is super versatile. In the next video we'll look at another way to create your 3GS apps using a package manager and a build tool. See you there!